Linda Pinizzato. She's not your typical realtor. She's your real estate counselor, teacher, and advisor. Whether it's a house, townhome, or condo, when you're ready, she's your negotiator. With 34 years of experience, Linda guarantees that you have the real estate knowledge you need to make the right decisions. Call Linda Pinizzato at Sutton Group Quantum Realty, 416-561-7373, or visit her at lindapinizzato.com. Hello there, you're listening to Linda Penizzato of The Condo Expert, and we're at the studio at the Hayes FM here in Mississauga. Fabulous conversation, important conversation. Get your notepad, get your pen out, and write the notes. Important news release came out, and it says, Realtors raise concerns over potential proposals to make first-time home buyers pay more Toronto home buying tax. As you know, I'm a realtor. I'm uh, ending my government relations chair position this year after actively being involved with the directorship for eight years and five years in GRC, working with the Toronto Real Estate Board, chair of the Mississauga Real Estate Board, and Ontario and Canadian Real Estate Board. Finger to the pulse, staying on top of important issues with respect to home ownership. So let me read this to you. The Toronto Real Estate Board is sounding the alarm over a potential proposal that would see first-time homebuyers in Toronto pay more Toronto home buying tax, land transfer tax. Toronto Real Estate Board is responding to published comments indicating that the city's budget committee may consider a proposal to eliminate the Toronto home buying tax on the first 200000 value of a home for all homeowners but to also eliminate the current rebate that relieves first-time home buyers from paying home buying tax on the first 400,000 value of a property. The potential proposal, if implemented, would result in first-time home buyers paying more home buying tax than they would currently be paying. Realtors are encouraged. And I you know, I'm I'm going to throw that out, not just realtors, homeowners, the public. Everybody, please, encourage. The city's budget chief and budget committee are actively considering options to provide relief to home buyers from the home buying tax. However, the Toronto Real Estate Board strongly believes that all Toronto home buyers deserve relief from this hurtful tax, including first time home buyers. And that was quoted from Diane Usher, who's the Toronto Real Estate Board president. So interesting enough, you know, we've got Jeff here. Jeff, you know, isn't this unbelievable? Like, you know, every time we turn around, there's something else hitting us in the face. How on earth is this going to help our economy? Well, I, I think the, the Toronto municipal government is certainly grasping at straws of trying to make things work better for themselves. You know, they need to get money from somewhere, and this is a way to kind of slow down the hot real estate market in Toronto. I think that uh, it's, it's hard, though. I mean, to, to put it on the shoulders of first-time buyers, I think, perhaps isn't the way to go. I mean, you need people entering the market at all times. It's sort of, um, you know, it's, it's like the circle of life of real estate. You know, you need people entering the market at all times so that, you know, those people that are reselling their houses can do that because they're moving from their first house, perhaps. So, yeah, it's certainly a difficult balancing act that they're going through right now. And this is, I, I think that the press release is probably throwing it out there to to create some feedback. And I would certainly encourage people to provide feedback if they have it, whether they're a realtor or whether they're a consumer. Absolutely. Well, I've worked, uh, I've had the benefit of working with Vaughn Palmer, the Toronto Real Estate Board Chief Government and Public uh, Affairs Officer. And, uh, you know, over the last number of years. And he's also made a statement here saying, which, of course, I totally agree with. Even first-time homebuyers purchasing below average price properties are being forced to pay thousands of dollars in Toronto home buying tax. Any proposal to eliminate the first-time buyer rebate would make the situation worse. First-time homebuyers deserve more relief, not less. And, you know, this brings to mind that I was actually involved with the deputation to the city of Mississauga regarding the uh, municipal land transfer tax. And not a week ago, 
the Ontario Real Estate Association, as one of their advocacy programs, was to go and meet with the different members of provincial parliament to explain to them how crucial and how hurtful it would be for the MLTT to actually hit the marketplace for other areas outside of Toronto, MLTT being municipal land transfer tax. And they said that it was not on the table right now. Mm -hmm. Yet, that one's not on the table. We get it. But if Toronto is pushing forward with this, isn't that going to maybe create a domino effect somewhere along the way? It's getting dangerous. It's it's actually not beneficial to anybody Well, it certainly there. opens up a Pandora's box. I mean, you, ha- you have to think about land for transfer taxes, not just in Toronto, but everywhere. So whether it's another community in Canada or in the States, you know, in Toronto, we certainly pay an exorbitant amount in comparison to other locales out there. So if you went to, let's say, Phoenix or <laughs> Miami or something, you're not going to pay the kind of land transfer tax that you pay in Toronto. Same with uh, if you even if you uh, kept it in Canada here, if you went to a smaller town or if you even went to Vancouver. I don't quite frankly, I don't know the Vancouver one, but I'm sure it's probably less. But, you know, and it's all it's all geared towards price. And of course, we have high prices and, you know, the money of uh, the amount of money that's coming out of this is being generated out of this is a, a huge tax boon, obviously, for you know, governments to be able to, you know, take that money and pay their bills, basically. Well, this is it. And, you know, the thing is, is that, okay, everybody has always been accustomed to knowing that they have to pay provincial land transfer tax. Okay, that's been a given. When all of a sudden, you know, it, it became a combination of the two, that's where the problem became. And now taking away the relief for first-time home buyers has created even a bigger problem. Like, I, I'll just give some figures out here. For instance, if someone tomorrow, I was going to use 400, but let's just use uh, 350,000. And you that's know, low if you really think it about is. it, right? Because, yeah, I mean, as a first-time buyer, maybe, yeah, 350 is the way to go. But, you know, that's, that's going to buy you a condo, maybe a small townhouse at the most. Exactly. And, and so you think about like 350000 your provincial land transfer tax is 3725 3, mm-hmm. Your Toronto land transfer tax is 3225 So you're actually totaling just under seven grand. So $6,950 is what your total would be. And that's not looking at any you know degree of exemptions. That's for someone who's purchasing in Toronto and they're going to have the double land transfer tax. If they only had the provincial and they were buying outside of Toronto, then they'd be 3725 But again, you know, you're talking about $350,000 in a purchase price, which is really at your bare minimum to some degree. Well, so, no, no, if you know, you can double that. Like if you go to five fifty dollars now, yeah. just for, you know, argument's sake here. So now what I've done is I've just keyed it into the computer and I have it at a purchase price of $550,000, $200,000 more. I came out to 7000 before. Now I'm coming into a total of $14,200 to total provincial and Toronto land transfer tax. And Double. It's double. And that's a problem. I mean, if you're looking at from a qualifying basis as well, if somebody's just got 5%, we're talking about adding 2 3 4% on top of that for a consumer to have when they're ready to purchase a house in addition to their down payment just for the things that are going to need to close the deal. You're going to have to pay, you know, hookups, uh, you know, electricity and phone and all those other things. There's those taxes and there's lawyer fees and there's so many other things. So it's just asking consumer and a first-time buyer in this case to shoulder that much more. And when you talk about the 550 case, again, you know, for somebody to have that kind of money just on hand is, uh, it's difficult for people to have that kind of cash. Well, I think uh, what it does too is it, it freezes spending because you've got to be freezing spending. So if you've got to start kicking out this kind of money, especially if you have to do it across the province now, it's going to affect employment of service trades. So, you know, in other words, you know, home design groups, uh, you know, improvements, furniture, different things that you may need for your household. Uh, You know, it's got renovations for one, I'm sure. So, you know, Home Depot, I mean, how much can you, how much additional monies can you have? And then you think about if you've got children and they're involved in extracurricular activity, which we've all proven, every statistic out there says the same thing. What is it? 12% children overweight at computers, 
in front of televisions, not getting exercise, we're going to take the affordability from the families to put them into extracurricular activity, which is going to put a drain now on the health system. It's, it's like a domino effect. I mean, it really is, isn't it? Well, it's definitely taking that money and, you know, like you said, either freezing it or just not having it to spend disposable for something else out there. And um, I heard an interesting statistic about people who buy a new house or whether, whether they buy a resale or whether they buy a new house. But within six months, 40% of those people buy a new car. Really? Oh, yeah. isn't that interesting? And so then it's they almost get, like, they, oh, wow, that's a, you know what? That's heavy duty because those cars are amortized over five years. Yeah. Yeah. Those payments are pretty high. So they buying them, you think, or leasing them? It, it doesn't matter doesn't, what they're yeah, it's doing. It's still a lot of money. Yeah. It's, it's like they, oh, I've got that car now and I paid, you know, certain things and I've had to rearrange my finances in some way. But now I feel, you know, I need a new car in the driveway too now that I have a new house. So wanting too much too quick. Well, and, you know, you know, you said that could have an impact on that statistic as well because you're going to be paying out thousands of dollars to someplace else that you would have otherwise and in this case you might have bought that new car well you know it it brings to mind um you know what makes people happy i guess and uh interesting enough i mean with vehicles everybody knows it's a depreciating value you know but it looks good <laughs> it looks good. And then, it of course, great. you know, we're, uh, in around Christmas time, I guarantee you people are going to be booking uh, gym memberships by January 1st. Isn't <laughs> that a trend as well? Absolutely. <laughs> I actually used to be involved in the uh, fitness industry, and it was the funniest thing to see. It was the same every single year. You know, in January, you see the flood of people. Again, you see, you know, when the, when the weather turns in sort of March and April, you see another uptick in activity. And then by the summer, everybody's away. And then another uptick in activity in September and then tapers off by Christmas. And then you're back to January again. Isn't it? It's yeah, the you know same what? They, every year. <laughs> That's like a major spike. Everybody starts thinking about health, conscientiousness and fitness, right? Yeah. Uh, but they want to enjoy, resolution. well, New Year's resolution. That goes along with the smoking deal. And on that <laughs> note, <laughs> you're listening to Linda Pinizzato of the condo expert today. I'm speaking with Jeff Brewitt and he is a financial and housing consultant. We're having some great conversation. Hang tight and we'll be right back. Oh, my computer crashed. Oh no, I've got a virus. Oh, uh, no way. No internet connection. Do you need help? Call IT Mayday. 647-977-7113. ITMayday.com. 